Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here today. My name is Alicia Joe, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about how you can empower yourself with learning about your genetics and how that can help your health. I am a geneticist. I am also a world Taekwondo bronze medalist. And I'm a mom. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna take you on a journey to tell you about how being these three things, being a scientist, being an athlete, and being a mom have showed me how to push beyond my own expectations, how to not to put myself in a box, and how to empower myself to live the life that I want to live. I was born in China. I came to the US when I was five years old, and I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> accurate just accurate uh, 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 de de depiction of the Statue of Liberty right there. <laughs> I came here as a Chinese American and I had expectations from my parents that I was going to be really, really good at math. And I am. I knew that I was destined to be a nerd. I had academics in my family. My parents are academics, my grandparents are academics, my aunts and uncles are all academics. So when I grew up, I always knew that academia was going to be a part of my life. I grew up on university campuses, and I would study in the university library while my mom was finishing up work, and I would do my homework. Every night I would come home and I'd have 30 minutes of golden TV time I would sit myself in front of the TV set, and I put on my favorite show, The Power Rangers. <laughs> I loved The Power Rangers. I knew that I was going to become a Power Ranger. <laughs> and I was pretty sure the way for me to become a Power Ranger was that I needed to learn martial arts. So I went to my parents and I said, hey, can I please enroll in karate? My parents nodded and they smiled, and then they put me in Chinese dance class. <laughs> Not quite the same. I, I learned coordination, I got flexible, it wasn't quite Power Ranger worthy. <laughs> Skip to college. I had indeed fulfilled my destiny of becoming a nerd, and I got into MIT as a freshman. As a freshman at MIT, they sent me the enrollment packet to welcome me as a new student, and I ripped it open, really excited, not to enroll in the classes or to find out who my professors were going to be. I ripped open the club sports package because I knew I was going to enroll in martial arts. <laughs> I looked at all the sort of choices in front of me. There was karate, there was jiu-jitsu, and I saw taekwondo. I looked at these people and I thought, these people look normal, they look friendly, and they don't look scared. Great, this is what I'm gonna do. So I joined the MIT Sport Taekwondo Club as a freshman at MIT. While I was there, I remember testing for my very first belt, which was a yellow belt, and as I was doing my belt test, I watched these four candidates come in to test for their black belts. I sat there and looked up at them as they were kicking and sweating and crying and earning their black belts, and I thought, that will never be me. <laughs> Taekwondo was a hobby, it was something that I enjoyed, but it wasn't something that was ever part of my destiny. I kept doing Taekwondo, and over time I kept earning the next belt. Four years later, I found myself walking onto the mat as a candidate for a black belt test. And I was the only one that day. As I stood up on that mat, I was kicking, I was sweating, I was crying, and I earned my black belt. And I saw all the white belts and yellow belts in the crowd looking at me with the same awe that I had looked at those belt, black belt candidates when I was still a beginner. And I realized that I had exceeded my own expectations for myself that I had not put myself in a box, and that I had learned how to be more than what I thought I could be. I eventually ended up being part of the US Collegiate Taekwondo team for two years, and I competed on behalf of the United States at several international competitions. 
I won a bronze medal and earned my fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo, which makes me a Taekwondo master. I opened my own school with my friends in San Francisco. And when people come in and they take a class and they see me at the front of the room, I can tell they're a little bit surprised. They're expecting to see Mr. Miyagi or Chuck Norris. <laughs> I am a petite Chinese woman. What Taekwondo has taught me is to own my truth. What Taekwondo has taught me is to not let my own expectations box me in and not let other people's expectations box me in. Every day when I teach Taekwondo to my students, I am teaching them to not let themselves box themselves in. In my professional career, I actually have a very similar story. So, oh, I realized I didn't show you my picture of my... <laughs> um, I did graduate from MIT, and I was very successful as an academic. I actually went and got my PhD at Harvard and was studying breast cancer research. Thank you. <laughs> I knew that I wanted to become an academic. I knew that I was going to be a professor. And it was actually well into my work in my postdoc um, that for the first time, I thought about maybe not doing academia. It was when I was pregnant with my son, who is now three and a half years old, and I was going on maternity leave, and I was looking at all the experiments that I was going to have to shut down in order to take my maternity leave, and I realized that the work that I was doing, although it was important, it really had no immediate impact on patient health and patient outcomes. It was theoretical impact, not real impact. And so, as I was on my maternity leave, I remember very vividly that I was sleep deprived and not really in very good decision making capacity. <laughs> and I saw an article that came out in the New York Times. I have to give credit to my husband, who's the one who sent me this article, so I'm giving him a shout out. <laughs> my son was six weeks old and I read this article about this company called Color Genomics that was changing the landscape of breast cancer by making genetic testing for breast cancer predisposition genes more affordable and more accessible and more available to all women. They were taking a test that normally cost $4,000 and making it only $250. And I thought, that's interesting. That feels like real impact. And maybe it was the fact that I was completely sleep deprived and I didn't know what I was doing, but I sent an email in that day I was standing with my six-week-old baby in a baby carrier because he wouldn't sleep otherwise. And I stood there at my kitchen counter and I wrote my cover letter and my resume and I sent it in. And they actually emailed me back. When I went in for the interview, I met Amin Laraki, who's the CEO and co-founder of Color. He told me the story of why he founded Color. He actually is an engineer born and raised in Morocco, came to the US to study engineering at Stanford as an undergrad. He subsequently worked at Google and worked on the Chrome browser, which I think most people use as their browser these days, and then became a VP at Twitter. From my standpoint, as far as Silicon Valley success goes, he had it. But then he founded Color. And the reason was because he is a BRCA2 carrier. Having a mutation in the BRCA1 or BRCA2 genes can increase your risk of breast cancer up to 80% in your lifetime and your risk of ovarian cancer up to 50%. Very famously, Angelina Jolie had a mutation in the BRCA1 gene and she wrote about it in the New York Times. Ottman told me the story about how his mother had to have two bouts of breast cancer before she qualified for testing and found out that she was a BRCA2 carrier, which is how he found out that he was a BRCA2 carrier. He founded Color because he wanted to make this type of technology available and accessible, not just to the people who could afford it and the people who could take the time off their work to get it. He wanted to make it available to everyone. I immediately knew that this was where I wanted to be. This was the impact that I wanted to have. So I took the leap and I joined Color. I left behind my academic career. I wouldn't let that expectation or the idea that my destiny was to become a professor box me in. I didn't let my expectations limit me. Now that I have joined Color, I remember very a few weeks in, a client actually wrote in, let's call her Mary, 
Mary wrote in and she told the story about how she had gotten this test, found out that she was a BRCA1 carrier, and then told her parents her mother got tested and found out she also was a carrier. When her mother went in for treatment for being a BRCA1 carrier to talk with her doctor about her options, they decided to have her ovaries removed. And when they did, they found stage two ovarian cancer. Ovarian cancer is a very, very deadly cancer that is usually not curable because by the time that you detect it, it's too late. But at stage two, it's treatable and it's curable. Mary wrote in to us and told us, your test saved my mother's life. That's real impact. I knew I had made the right choice. What I'm here to tell you about today is that you can also make that choice. You don't have to be a passenger in your health care. You can be a driver. Knowing your genetic risk for disease is how you can participate in your own health. To not box yourself in with the expectation that the heart disease that runs in your family or the cancer that runs in your family just has to happen. It's not a destiny, it's something that you can change. Maybe a decade ago we didn't have this technology, we didn't have this knowledge, but now we do. And today what I'm here to tell you is that Knowing about your genetics is a way for you to take control of your own health. Having some information about uh, your genetics and as it relates to heart disease means that you can take action. You can exercise more, you can eat better, you can take the statins that lower your cholesterol in your bloodstream. These are all things you can do to prevent that risk in your, in your family. So I want you to think about what runs in your family and I want you to think about what you can do to get ahead of that risk. Don't be afraid of it. Feel empowered by it. As moms, daughters, wives, sisters, we spend all of our time thinking about taking care of our families. Before I came here today, I was actually helping my husband back in San Francisco make a list of all of the lunches he could send my three and a half year old to preschool with that wouldn't kill his friends. <laughs> As moms, we think a lot about taking care of our families and we don't think about taking care of ourselves. But what I'm telling you is that taking care of yourself is taking care of your family. Getting yourself knowledge about your genetics and how that affects your risk for disease is a way to make sure that you are here for your children for a very, very long time. So at the end of today, I want you all to think about this and I want you to take the action to get some information and get empowered by your genetics so that you can get ahead of whatever runs in your family. Thank you.